Welcome to episode 98 of the Liberty Dad podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Libertarians on 25 Issues, Regulations. If you're new to the show, Liberty represents the message for all your freedom all the time. And Dad represents the delivery, recognizing tomorrow's conversation with my son is determined by how I engage with him today and then applying that to those around me. I'm taking the concept of a dad that can speak on many different topics and applying it to liberty. But speaking is not enough. It's important to be informed and speak in a manner that invites people to seek out your opinion in the future. This season, I'm joined by local Libertarian City Council candidate Jerry Rohrbaugh, known to many as Pastor Tubb or just Tubb. Pastor Tubb, a father of three, shares the same vision I do when it comes to communicating liberty. Prepare for tomorrow's conversation today. The theme for season three of the Liberty Dad podcast is Libertarians on 25 Issues. Each episode will focus on one of 25 different issues from a libertarian perspective. I got the idea from the book Introduction to the Libertarian Party by Wes Benedict. In the next hour or so, you'll become more informed about how libertarians view regulations. With that, let's dive right in. Tub, how's it going? Hey, all right. We're, he is back. We're, we're doing a podcast now. We are doing a podcast. We're okay. sitting here talking about church. He almost roped me in, but it didn't work. It's still hope. Because I am wearing my... Your suit, anti-Jesus? My suit of armor. <laughs> that's of not how that... That's not how that, 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 armor. There it is. Okay. All um, right. You know, okay. from Ephesians it's, 6. Why? I always just be doing something. Like, it's, it just isn't getting better. All right. All right, what are we doing? Imagine this poor guy getting all this trouble from me and still coming back. I come back. I, I keep coming back each it's week. It's got to be the Jesus in you. It has to be. This is the trials. This is the test. This is God saying, if you will follow me, you're going to go through some things. I'm going to strengthen your resolve. and I'm going to make you follow and you know just be more in touch with me. Right. And I'll be like, all right, God, if you're sure, but how are you going to do that? Bam! Through the Here it is. Right. That, that, that he will draw me closer. So none of y'all libertarians that give people crap, y'all can't phase him because he deals with me. Amen. So go on his page and give it to him and see. No, just kidding. No, trust people. me. Don't you don't. Do you don't have to encourage that. It will. It <laughs> yeah, will yeah. Just I know, right? So, all right. So today we're talking about regulations, and here's the interesting thing: libertarians generally don't like regulations, but. Most people tend to think like you just don't want to be told what to do and you want the world to collapse. And we are going to dispel that a little bit. All right, hold on. You didn't show us the book part. Oh, well, no, we will get to that. We will get oh. to that. So before we get into that. Don't we have a form? I don't, listen, I am a creature of habit. There's, I expect things to flow in a certain manner. We, and we, by now, you would have usually covered what the book says. Well, we got to get out our little, you know. Okay, back and are forth. you going to show us what the book says? I am going to show you what the book says. So Thank what you. we've got All is right. in this book right here. Introduction to the Libertarian Party. What we've got is in chapter three, uh, the author, Wes Benedict, goes through and he takes just you know a moment, like a few sentences at most. And this is the lengthier about, one today. This usually it's even shorter one. than this. Yep, it's usually shorter, but it's like a sentence or two, maybe three. This one's you know, this one looks like it's, about it's like a paragraph, paragraph. dude. I know, it's like, it's yeah, like, this he, he wrote, wrote it all out in this like one. A novella here. Right. I'm like, man, I'm gonna be able to, if people could be able to read this on the screen, I'll put everything on there. But uh so he, he just describes it in short. And then what we do is we talk about it a little we bit. We make more it unshort. Depth. Yeah, we do. We we unshortenize okay. it. Okay. <laughs> That's totally a word. Totally made that up. All right. So here's what he has to say. Regulations are supposed to help the to help order the economy and protect consumers from dangerous products. Much existing regulation is voluntary and private, enforced by associations and third parties, such as underwriters, laboratories, co co kosher, kosher foods, consumer reports standard and pores, and seals of approval. Regulatory functions should be reprivatized to promote innovation, reduce costs, and allow individuals to choose not to follow regulations they deem harmful to themselves, get rid of most government regulation. What is wrong with getting rid of most government regu regulations? Uh, what's so, the problem with that? So uh, of getting wrong with them? Well, no, I, get, getting rid of them. What's, oh. what's the problem with that? People hate that. You talk about it and they're like, no, we got to have them because otherwise people will be dying. Do you, do you know that actually in one day I was talking to somebody not ter terribly long ago 
and we were it kind of it got into regulation, but that wasn't the point of our conversation. Mm-hmm. And, and I mentioned, and he's like, "Well, no, we absolutely have to have all the government has to check all of these things and do all these things." I said, "Why?" And he gave an example, which was, which was legit. Uh, he saw about uh, the meat packers and meat cutters uh-huh. years ago, right? And there were no stairs, and it was actually finally somebody inside of there who kind of came out and said, "Hey, you know, this is what's going on inside of here," and that prompted the government to start getting involved and get regulations about how they produce, right. okay? Legit argument. But what I kind of point out to him, I said, oh, let me see if I have this right then. I said, who told them? How did the government find out that this was an issue inside of these meatpacking places? They're like, oh, a guy came and whistleblowed, basically. I said, oh, so what you're saying then is people police themselves. Right. And they came and said, this is a bad thing that's happening. And then government, I said, so government didn't find it on their own. They right. didn't find the problem. Somebody alerted them. Right. And then they reacted. So basically, they were starting to do it on their own anyway right. but the argument goes well without regulatory you know confines like we call them right um who's going to keep these standards up right well i think the argument would be okay yeah that guy could have came out and said hey guys what's going on this is this is what's happening in the meat packing industry and then somebody could say uh and, and then he might get fired fired right mm-hmm. and so and then then it's like hey if you want to keep your job then you don't say anything. Don't say anything. Right. right. And so the, the argument tends to be government is the one because government has enough authority over these organizations mm-hmm. that they could say, hey, 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 you can't fire this guy because you were letting people get their thumbs cut off. Right. And the thumbs were going into the meat and then people are eating it. And that's kind of gross. You know, so like they could, you know, so the idea is that government is the one that oversees and has some level of authority. But without government, there would be no authority to to kind of force these organizations to reconcile these problems so how do we reconcile them in absence of government are we already there dude i got so many other things it doesn't even get us into the into the solving but look dude look i got like stuff look looks gibberish to me it's because you don't have to understand i understand that's all that matters okay okay listen these are notes for me to remember this is what i got going on i don't even know a tablet could use wing dings why do it's not why am i even bothering like, why do I show so what's up? So this what is, we got? So what'd you say? What episode was this? Um, this is uh, this is number thirteen, but this is episode ninety eight. Okay, so it's thirteen for us. Uh, so we're this, this the is thirteenth of the twenty five. No, this is thirteen of thirteen. This is thirteen of the top thirteen issues that Wes Benedict brings forward. All right, so lucky number thirteen. No, what I'm getting at is I'm not coming back next week. <laughs> That's what all that was. Come we're now. thirteen of thirteen. All right, so here's what I had yep. because people started questioning, like, well, because. As you realize, not everybody understands regulations. Not right. everybody understands why the government did have. So I started looking up different things. And, and you know what comes up? You start researching a little bit. And you don't have to go crazy. It's not like, what's wrong with regulations? You just do government regulations. You start doing a basic search. Mm-hmm. And some of the number of things that first come up, lemonade stands. As crazy as this sounds, do you understand? Like, I'd heard stories about this. I'd heard sto- yeah. different various stories about how uh, kids were running a lemonade stand. Yep. And they didn't get a proper license to run a yep. lemonade stand. I've heard of them. And, um, but you understand, it's a big problem. Yeah. Like, many states are struggling with it. Now, actually, um, I, dang it, I can't remember. I don't think it was Country Time. One of them actually started kind of pushing back against it. They started making a fund that if nothing else, are helping the people get these right. licenses to do it. And so I'm like, wait a minute lemonade stands and, and that's where we are yeah okay because that's what happens with government there are stories of police showing up and shutting down a lemonade stand there is a video that got popular of a woman uh one of those karens right and she's outside of like a an apartment complex or something and i don't remember which city it's in she's on the phone and there was a young little little girl that was selling bottled water and she's like this young lady is like she was like nine mm-hmm. And she, you know, and uh, she was like this, you know, she's on the phone and she's like, yeah, this, this young girl's selling water and she doesn't have a license. And it's like, she's selling, first of all, she's selling bottled water. Okay. Like, like it's, it's, it's bottled. It's already, yeah. And it's, it's, sealed. it's sealed. There's no issues with like, it. Exactly. So not, mm-hmm. You know, and should she have been selling it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. Like, like what's, what's, what's easy for, yeah, you why know? not? Uh, like, I don't care. And, um, and what made it even worse was I think the woman was white. And if I remember correctly, the young girl's black. And so it became like this race issue. And, I, you know, but honestly, I don't think it was the race issue. I think she might have done it if it was a little white girl. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's sometimes I've seen just... pictures of, of kids that were white and getting their lemonade stands shut down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. And, this is not a race thing. And the problem seems to be that um, people think that in the absence of regulation, that harm will come. That, uh, that, and that with regulation... All of a sudden, harm there is no harm. Like all of a sudden, everything turns out fine. And then when once... you point out that harm still comes, 
they you know it's all of a sudden this like mental acrobatic okay so here's an example of what you're saying Let's do that it. you can have regulations but it doesn't solve the problems oh, okay yeah. so i started looking at what are some other regulations that we don't think about okay speed limits right speed limits are actually a form of government regulation right. that's them saying you're only going to drive this fast right okay now once again how many times have you seen accidents happen even when people are driving under the speed limit right so regulation doesn't make things right uh full i don't want to say foolproof but it doesn't make it things where it's always safe right okay um drinking ages right Okay, how many times have you seen it? Listen, it's not underage drinking that's always causing the problem. Right. There's full-on adults. Right. So we see that regulation getting involved doesn't do that. The big one, which we've discussed here before, occupational licensing. Right. All right, there's a... Good Lord. You start getting into that, and you better spend time. I have a friend that comes over like every Friday night. Every Friday? Almost. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And, there's another fool like me that comes and, around yeah. here every week. And he's a little bit more liberal. He was actually in one of my episodes. Okay. And... He came over, and then we have another friend. She came over, and we ended up talking about occupational licensing. She was all about it. Okay. Very, right? very right, right on it. He was kind of like, yeah, I, I kind of support it because, you know, like, what, what would happen if we didn't have it, you know, kind of. And after she ended up leaving, he stayed a little bit later, and we we just ended up looking up, um, and, and I think it was on the post that you tagged me on this morning from the Institute of Justice or whatever. Mm -hmm. Happened to find out that, um, I'm going to try to remember the numbers, in Florida, uh, a barber has to have like 2,100 hours of education or something like Versus that. Versus 34 hours for a um, uh, EMT. A EMT. Mm -hmm. Something in I mean, it's insane. Yep. And it's like, wait a minute, this person just cutting hair. This other person like might actually end up saving your life. Yep. <laughs> in fact, the EMTs almost explicitly do not come unless you are having a medical problem. Mm hmm Right, like, like, like. There's a I, but I, they got their thirty hours of training. They should be yeah, fine. Like required, required training. I'm, uh -huh. I'm sure that they probably had. They might go to school and stuff like that. But yeah, but the uh -huh. required amount of training that they have, and, you know. And we we started looking up the cost of it, and the average barber, and uh, these numbers may be a little bit off, but they're basically mm -hmm. not right. The average barber makes about like twenty six thousand dollars a year in in um <clears throat> Florida. Okay. And the school costs about ten to twelve thousand dollars to go. So their first year is pretty. Yeah. it's half of it's gone. Right, in schooling. Right, mm -hmm. and and it takes about a year to get through the schooling because of so many hours and everything. We right. calculated it out and said, all right, if it was eight hours a day, blah 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 blah. This was, and I'm like, this is a very prohibitive. Uh, this is a barrier to entry for something that you could probably learn in your kitchen. People have, yeah. You know, I mean, I have it. Did, did you ever cut your hair? My dad used to cut our hair when we were uh, way younger. My, my mom looked at cutting and... hair. I, I cut Zach's hair once, and then Christy said, no more. No, that was it. Yeah, that she was, was like, you're... And I took pictures of it, and everybody was like, dude, your son's going to stab you in your sleep. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah the boy's going to remember this yeah. if you don't so, fix that. Yeah. Like, but, you know. But it's happened. But you can't tell now. Right. Right? He mm -hmm. had a haircut Friday it before his party, and you can't tell now. Exactly. It wasn't permanent. You, know, you, like, right. you didn't mar the kid for life or anything like that. You know, and he's three so nobody cares if you get a bad haircut right if he's he 12 know. that's a different story right so there's no point. i mean well uh like if listen if i saw that haircut i might make fun of him, especially right to you right like, do it's due to your kid you know but but yeah, so this is this is absurd this so, regulation because nobody can really tell you like when you talk to the people that support it mm -hmm. they usually use very extreme examples and they'll say something like well what if i went to a salon yep and and they burned my scalp because they were using this and they didn't know how to use it. I'm like, well, they could do that. They do that anyway. anyway. You know? That's the conversation I had. In fact, you, you, you know what? Uh, I, I'm thinking that as we speak, as I speak at the convention, there's kind of an, I think there's this is the examples I might use. So I'm right. not going to get too far into it now. But that was kind of the point is that right. just because they've gone through even all the schooling and everything, right. doctors go to schooling, they do all their things, and they still mess up sometimes. And you see a news story where they're like. Man, they were supposed to amputate the left leg, and they amputated the right leg. Like literally, I think like, that's, that's what happened. I've seen. Yeah, exactly. You know, like literally. So, so here's what I found out: um, the Code of Federal Regulations, the very first one, was in 1938. Okay. So they started. They they didn't waste a whole lot of time. Right. Okay. So here's how it progressed: in 1960, there were 22,877 pages of regulation. This okay. is federal. Okay. It's not state, counting anything state and local. Right. Okay. 1975, 71,224. 2,000, 138,049 pages of federal regulations. Right. 2019, it was 185,984 pages of federal regulations. 
That was a 700% increase wow. from when they started. Right. Now, here's the cool part. Cool, cool part. Uh-huh. Can somebody show us what well, we've had? Um, let me see if I say this right. A 700% increase in safety. No, absolutely not. Because I'm willing to bet that you can't find a 20% increase in safety. Because not across the board. Now, what's going to happen? Maybe certain industries where yeah. things were really, really bad meatpacking. Uh-huh. Maybe you can find something like that, right? And But that's the anomaly. Right. Yeah, that's yes. not the standard. That's right. a, We found this frequent. Right. But the, the thing is, they'll use that to justify. Right. We see that with government throughout across it. They right. find one thing that justifies their actions. Yep. They're going to use it for everything. Yep. So, so here's what I did, because you started talking about it. Um, we're like, I don't know if we can get into if individual states. Here's cost. Because you mentioned the cost mm-hmm. of regulations. So they put some in years back, not, not terribly long ago, for washing machines. Mm-hmm. Okay. And by putting these regulations in for, for washing machines, their goal was they wanted to raise the efficiency right. of the energy efficiency right. of the washing machines. Um, and so as they did it, here's what they learned. The only time people were saving money is when they used it past the normal use. So they so do people just they were forced to put get these type of washing machines with the guidelines put in them. So they were forced to get it, and the only way it was going to be energy efficient right. was to use it more than the average person uses it. Right. So it's not saving anything. Right. So what happens was it that ended up raising the prices because right. you start putting those guidelines in. The the one that I started looking, I'm like, well, wait a minute. If you want a perfect example of government regulations that's causing the price of things to drive out of control, automakers. Right. Because if you look at it, look at the safety guidelines that the government right. puts on cars now. It's right. just getting worse. Yeah. So we see these things. Isn't go, there a shutdown on cars right now? To oh, um, car making right now. What do you mean? I the, thought I thought I saw something in the headlines about cars that were uh, automakers like holding up on producing cars or something. Well, right like now there's something I know they have a chip shortage. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're referring to? Okay. Yeah. Maybe that. I, okay. I, I, no, because just, because I what they're doing. Related. Oh, okay. Because uh, what, what's happening here, well, this could fall into that area also, um, is that once they put this, these guidelines in, people go, oh, that's really good. Right. You ever look back in the cars in the 60s where they might have had a lap belt? Right. You ever Guess what? You know what people did? They drove, they did their things, and they did life still. So right. here's what happens. When you, government starts getting involved, they're saying, okay, um, now you got to have the blinker up on the mirror. Right. Now you got to be able to have the sensors right. that say when cars are around you. Those are all good things. Right. But the problem is some people ultimately wouldn't be able to afford those things. Right. Because every time you add something like that to it, the cost right. has to go up. Right. So when you keep adding what should be features, that right. maybe somebody wants these things, maybe somebody doesn't want these things. Right. But when government got involved and made the automakers forced to put these things in the vehicles, right. There's no control now. Right. Now everybody's getting for getting them and paying for it, right. even if they can't. I would be willing to make this argument, but I don't have any data to support it. But I think that when we when we regulate these kind of things, when we require them, we actually delay the time that people of lesser means can mm-hmm. afford them. Yep. And here's, here's the argument I'm going to make. So what normally happens is something new comes out. So like when um, when uh, not b- before we had DVDs and all that, we had the um, the disc, uh, the Blu-ray, not Blu-ray. Before that, the big, huge ones, the laser disc, the laser disc. Mm-hmm. So you had the laser disc, right? And only rich people could afford them. Yep. Uh, flat screen TVs that were like seventy inches. Again, when they first came out, rich people could afford them, right? And uh, like only rich people, because they were like thousands and thousands. Yeah, of dollars, yeah, like ten thousand yep. dollars for a TV, mm-hmm. right? So even your like decent middle class family couldn't. Afford it was like it. not getting right, right? And if they had the money, they weren't going to spend it on a TV. So that was always happens, our thing. <laughs> what happens is. The R and D gets paid for up front with with these very high costs by the people that want it that have the money to buy them. They're like, oh, I want to buy this. And, mm-hmm. you know, I have so the wealthy people can go out and buy them, and then you you reduce or not you you basically pay back some of the R and D effectively. Y- yes, right. Uh-huh. And so then what ends up happening is um, that tells you whether or not there's a strong demand, mm-hmm. and then they start making more, and they find out ways to build them cheaper so that they can increase their um, production, their, their production, mm-hmm. and their uh, and their uh, sales, mm-hmm. right. And so then eventually the cost comes down and then people of lesser means can afford them, you know, yippee ki right? Um, but when government mandates it, uh-huh. I think that there, that if we went and studied it, we'd find that it actually slows that process because it forces all these things at once and it distorts the market on whether or not people actually want, want it, it, right? Mm-hmm. And um, And since you have to do it, then it becomes a mandate, which means 
other companies can't compete by doing something slightly different because they have to follow the specs and all this other uh -huh. stuff, right? So you, you're basically distorting the market, having that flexibility of saying, you know, this company is going to do it one way, this company is going to do it another way, and they're, you know, kind of like the Blu-ray versus uh, 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 HD, right? Right. Uh, if anybody remembers back in the day when Blu-ray was fighting against HD uh, DVDs mm -hmm. to see who would who would win out, Blu-ray eventually won out. But if it had been mandated, then everybody would have got the same thing, and it would have been harder to compete and say like we our version is better for whatever reason. Maybe we marketed better. Maybe yeah. we got a better product. Once everybody's forced to do mm -hmm. this, which if you start looking, if we're talking about automakers or whatever it happens to right. be, when everybody has to do it like this, once right. again, you are limiting that. Right. You are limiting the the things that people want or don't right. want. And in some cases, you might get a cheap knockoff that works well Just, enough for some people. Yep. You know, like it meets the standard they need it for. Yeah. Like, like, okay. So I don't game or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So we have a 55 inch TV <clears throat> in our living room. Okay. It's not one of the big brand names or anything like that, but for what I need it for that Chinese Hawaii or whatever, so, you know, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I don't know why I keep having these problems, but, um, but the thing is with that why is the CCP show right? up on my TV when I turn it on. <laughs> so is it, but it serves my purpose, right? It serves what I needed to do. Now, here's the thing. If I was a gamer, I probably want more stuff involved. And I, and right. I'm fine. Right. The problem is you start doing regulations and those things all start coming to the now. Right. All TVs are like this or have to be like right. this. And I go, but I don't want all that. Right. So I go without a TV. No, here's what tends to happen. I'm going to keep my old one. Right. And, and I think that we're going to start seeing this in other ways. Um, I've already been saying that I, I tend to get a new truck every about three years or so. Right. I like the idea of having a vehicle. I know I don't have to, I'm not the mechanic. Right. So I like having something I can rely on, stuff like that. Right. And I've said next January, I'll trade in this truck that I have and I'll get a new one. And then I'm probably going to be done. Right. I'm probably going to ride that one for a while. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I don't want an electric one. Right. And because government's getting involved and they're pushing everything right. to the electric side, I don't want one. Right. But what's going to happen? It's going to happen that as they keep progressing down that road. Right. They're going to eliminate that from us. Biden's going to make you get one. I'm telling you, that's this is not the conversation we're having right now. But you ain't wrong. I'm just saying, uh, you're, you will do it. Uh huh. That's that's what's coming. That's what it's he coming said. to. Yep. And listen, he doesn't remember if he said it, so I'm fine. The so, Bilderbergers will. The who? What? The people that run the world. It's just a joke. It's a conspiracy theory joke. Never mind. Did I know this one? No, it's just like there's all these conspiracy theories about like who's running the world. And there's right. like this group called the Bilderberger Group. Bilderberger. Yeah, you'll have to look it up. Later. I'll look it up. Okay. All right. So great. There's more things to waste time on. All right. So hang on. I got notes here. That's just okay. So here's what I have. What we're saying here. They make these changes many times in the name of protection and safety. Right. And because that happens, all these other things start happening. The problem is, it is not the government's role to protect us. Right. It is, listen, if we make bad decisions, bad things happen right. to us. It's that easy. It's not, because if it becomes government's role, which we've kind of made in this, where all these regulations are coming in, well, it's their job to protect us and keep us safe. Right. Where's the stop? Right. There's there's no right. logical end to right. keeping us safe. Well, and, and not only that, the government tends to not have to pay any liability if they screw it up. Right? Oh, yeah, that was a different, yeah. Uh-huh. You know, so like, there was a, a bill review that I did a while back. I think it was before I brought you on. I'm pretty, I'm almost positive it was before. Oh, so it was back when the show was just, eh. Yeah, when it was yeah. just immediately. And it got by. When and, you had three uh, viewers and now we're at five. There was, uh, there was this anti-tipping bill where they wanted to implement features to prevent, um, like, dressers from tipping over uh -huh. on, on, on children, specifically. And so there was, like, all these features. And I remember I posted, I was like, here's your answer. And I took a screenshot of... Uh, a hook and an eye, an eye hook. Uh huh. And I was like, "This is how you prevent tip over." And done. Because that's what my mama did. Mm -hmm. My mama, like, I didn't have a single thing tip over on me because she drilled a hole in the friggin' wall, and then she put the ones, you know, the one side, the the, the hook in it, uh -huh. and then she put the eye into the, the whatever the, the dresser. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You pay a lot of money. Blah blah blah. Pay, pay a lot of money. It costs a buck for that. No, no. You pay a lot of money for the dresser, and then do you want to put oh. a hole in it? I'm like, but wood putty, you can fix it, whatever. Just quit yeah. Crying. And the like, back of it. Anyway, anyway, the furniture, worth, the furniture we had growing up, worth that dollar? was not the concern. Right. In all honesty, the hole in the right. back of the thing was not the, our you furniture. Know, but they wanted, like, there was this, like, whole campaign to, like, and they were like, this is how many children. And I I, mean, I went through the details of that, and I, I was, like, I was kind of tearing it up, in my opinion. 
you know, just like, okay, well, here's a problem, here's a problem, here's a problem. And I'm like, here's all these problems, and you can solve this just by, you know, I don't know, having commercials on TV of people like, wow, my little Johnny used to climb up on his his desk and you know, or his dresser, and it would occasionally fall over on him. But now I put two eye hooks in there, it cost me a dollar and you, you ten know, minutes you know of my lot, time. You know what will happen? Industry will come around to that. Industry will go, you know what? You're right. People don't want their dresser to right. fall over on their kids, right. but they don't want to drill a hole. So I promise you some company at that point would go, hey, we have a way that uh, tape, whatever we want to use. Right. Uh, like do we have those, uh, what are those things that come off the wall? Right. Uh, they peel yeah. right off. Yeah, the easy. They, yeah, they would have stuff along those lines. Yeah, something. They'll, they'll come up with something. Industry. That, private yeah. industry yeah. would or, come up with it. Or you could just have like, you know, there are type of fasteners that go into the wood where it literally gets screwed in and then you can screw a screw inside of it. Yes. Right. And it holds it. And yep. so now it looks nice. You don't mm -hmm. just have this ugly gangly hole in your furniture. But the, the point is when government does it, 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 it forces everybody to use a particular way when there may be a, a, a more inexpensive way yep. to accomplish the same thing that may in some ways work better. Right. Because what happens if, um, I feel like a lot of the regulation put, makes people complacent. And I think that's a big problem because we're like, oh, well, it must be safe because it's went through, you know, whatever approval process. Mm -hmm. And, but how many people still get sick at restaurants? How many people still yep. have mishaps? You know, it was, I don't think it's the case right now, but like two years ago, right before COVID, the third leading cause of death was medical error. 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 Right. Mm -hmm. And these are people that are highly trained. You know, you if you want to be a surgeon, you're going to like what twelve years of medical school, and then however much time before you're you know on your own. Before you're, yeah, before you're you know, doing like, it. I don't, uh -huh. I don't know how long it is, but I know it's it like I think standards like eight years of medical school for mm -hmm. to be a doctor, and then if you want to be a surgeon, it's like an additional at least four, maybe even longer than that. So how long do you got to be in school then before all the mistakes are gone? Right, and it's so never like, going to happen. And 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 they have all these things that they have to do. And there's all these procedures and, you know, all this other stuff and mistakes still happen. Why? Because people are human. People. Right? See, so here's what happens. So they start these ideas. Mm -hmm. The government comes up with these ideas. And then here's what they end up doing. Because now that they've passed these laws, here's what was happening. They were passing these laws and they're like, okay, now how do we make them followed? Who's enforcing right. these laws? Right. So then here's what they were doing. So they're making these new regulations but there was nobody to enforce them. So you know what they had to right. do? They'd start new branches of government right. to enforce these raw, these right. rawls, these rawls that they decided they were right. going to, to use. And so I started looking, I'm like, okay, wait a minute. So now we have to have somebody enforce to make people follow these rules. Right. So here's what they had to do. <clears throat> Businesses had to start hiring lawyers. Yep. They had to start hiring specialists inside of areas to start going, okay, are we complying right. with all these regulations? So here's what I realized. Do you realize human resources is blown up out of control? Most most any business nowadays, and it's not it used to be big businesses had human resources. Right. That's not the case anymore. Right. But you know why? Because there have been so many regulatory guidelines put in place right. that just keeping up with it couldn't be done anymore. That now you need this special person basically right. in all of these businesses is gonna keep up with right. all these new laws and guidelines, especially right now with all the COVID stuff. Right. If you don't have a full time HR person that's keeping track of this you're falling behind and you're probably right. never going to get to it. So I started looking at this. Um, compliance costs uh, rose 7.6% from 1998 to 2012. Here's the better part of this. In 2014, the U.S. Treasury collected $1.4 trillion in income taxes because of these people that were put in place to enforce regulatory guidelines. Right. So there's an incentive for the government. Then. Yes. Yeah. 1.4 trillion in one year right. in income taxes just by people that they force businesses to have because they started passing laws. Right. Like it's absurd. Yeah. So so here's what starts to happen that you start looking at and you go, why do they start these things? Right. Like why, <clears throat> why are they putting all these uh, regulations in place? Right. Who's really benefiting? Right. Because he here's what will happen. Like Facebook right now. Mm -hmm. Facebook has recently come out and said, we need to be regulated by the government. They, like they've said it. Yeah, it's weird. I need to be regulated. <laughs> it's not like I can, you know, make up my own decision to follow these rules that I think need to be governing me. You know what happens though? Hold on. You know what happens with this? They're already in. They've already gone through these barriers. Right. 
if they start saying, okay, what we do and others like us have to be regulated, yes. guess what now has to happen? These ones coming up oh, yeah. will never be able to fit into these guidelines. Oh, yeah, it's very protectionist. So, yes, that's all that is. Right. So we think, we hear somebody like, we, we hear somebody like Facebook or something, they made a big deal. Facebook wants to be regulated. Look how great this is. They're saying we need to get this under control. Right. No, they're not. Right. That's self-serving and the government realizes right. it. And the government's going to jump on this for all the wrong reasons. Right. And and Facebook could implement these by themselves, all the all the or any company, right? Like you, you see this. Like I, I used to see it in restaurant all the time when I was doing a lot of restaurant work. They would come out with some new rules, and the, and you know restaurant people would do the same thing. You know, some restaurant group or you know whatever they'd be like, yeah, we need these regulations. You know, it's for the safety. And I'm like, well, why haven't you implemented them already? All right. You know mm -hmm. why why didn't you just do it? You know, if it was that important to you. Why didn't you if, just do if it? If it's an industry problem, yeah. that means we've known about this. You know, Why are we not addressing it? And then it? use that to your advantage. Be like, well, Guess all what we do. restaurants, you know, because a lot yep. of these restaurants are owned by one corporation, right? Like, so mm -hmm. you'll, you'll have like Darden restaurants and they'll own yes. like, yep. you know, like Olive Garden and, you know. Yeah, like and get one of those gift cards. And, and has, you can go to any one of these eight yeah, places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so they could just come out and say, all of our restaurants abide by these. It's kind of like the... Um, I think for a while, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. You are one of the viewers that's oh, I, watching this. Give me a chance. Time. Let's go. Um, I believe the SAE certification uh -huh. used to not be required. It may still not be. I don't remember. But I thought it used to be. Yeah, I don't know if it is or even right now. I, I think it used to be at least uh -huh. that it was self um, uh, self regulated. Mm -hmm. So because companies that, that's would a say, selling point. It was a selling point. Mm -hmm. We're SAE reg, uh, yep. cer certified or whatever, right? And what does that mean? And that's what he was talking about. Like he mentioned all these different um, certifications that yep. can happen, right? And so, it, you know, in some cases, it doesn't really mean anything. But in some cases, it really does mean something. Okay. Kosher. Oh. If you want kosher, mm -hmm. like, you know that, like, if you're a Jewish person and you're looking for kosher food, you can bank on it. That kosher means kosher. Now, I don't yes. know if there's a, I don't know if there's any regulation. There probably is. But I'm willing to bet if there was no regulation, that kosher, you could bank on it, that it meant something, right? Because what it would, what would happen is you would have some organization, we'll just call it the, you know, the, you know Kosher International, right? Let's call okay. It, right. So you would know anything that has a Kosher International label. Label on it. Not kosher by us guys. Yeah, right? not by the USDA, Ko but right. uh -huh. kosher by, you know, some other organization. Mm -hmm. Kosher International, totally free market, right? Like we talked about in the past. You would know that means something. Right. And then you would know to be skeptical about everybody else. Everybody who doesn't. Right. So, okay. So what they started doing with all the COVID stuff, um, they, they started having different companies that came up with this new cleaning method mm -hmm. for it. And so a lot of restaurants, as mm -hmm. they started opening back up again, they started saying, we are using this new process. Mm -hmm. And they put their little side. And, and how smart was it that these companies said, hey, well, this is what we're going to do for you. Here's what we're going to give you. A little decal you put right up on your door. Right. And people will see this. And they'll then the customers can start coming in and going, oh, this right. is great. Not because government told them to, because these individual companies go, it's a good idea. Right. Maybe they don't like it. Maybe they don't like the extra fees, but they go, right. you know what? People will like seeing this. They will like this being a part of it. So right. what happens is, Unfortunately, government and all their great ideas isn't helping anything. Here's what I found. Because it's stifling new industry. Right. It's stifling growth inside of an industry. Right. Um, so first year regulatory costs on the average for a small business, okay, just federal regulations, is over $83,000 for a small business to be able to get up and going mm -hmm. and just to cover federal guidelines and right. regulations. So you start looking at that, you start going, okay, guess what happens? People now go, I can't even afford to get into this work. Right. I can't afford the 8,300,000. And remember that's small business. If right. you start getting bigger, they're going to go, yeah. dude, there's no way we can do yeah. this. So all it's really doing is limiting bringing people in. Right. Okay. Once again, nothing because they've proven anything. They just said, this is what right. we do now. Right. And, and so now it leads into the question of, why? Because here's what happens. There, there are kind of two areas, industries, if we want to call them that, industries, um, that tend to self-regulate because there are no guidelines on them. Media, churches. I what? You sure media doesn't? There's nothing. There's no. Re there's no regulation that says you have to cover news like this. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Okay, I got so yeah. you can look at all the people that we have out there can start a podcast and they can become news. Joe Rogan. Right. He just comes because there's no regulation about this is what you do. Churches are the same way. There's no regulations right. about churches. I mean, so, I could open a church today and say I'm a pastor. You know, I'm Deacon DL. 
Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think you should try that. Maybe yeah. it'll open up right next door to ours. It makes ours look even better. Right. So inside of that. But I could. I could. Yes, you could. There's yeah. the thing. So the idea that, you know what's funny? Both of these tend to make sure, and, and if nothing else, with both of these, I hate to say it this way, but the market will dictate whether they're good or bad. Right. It didn't take government coming in and saying, do this or you're bad. The right. people started going, I don't like what they're doing. It right. says, I don't like what they're doing. I'm not going to that one. Right. I'll go to this one over here. I'll use this as my news source. I'll go right. to this church. And it didn't take government. So you start looking at it and you go, wait a minute. What is government really doing when there are clearly times? Right. Here comes the question. And if there's a place that could be regulated, uh -huh. like where your soul goes. Mm, you know. I mean, you, know you think that would be a pretty like, important could one. Could you imagine that you go into a, like an unregulated church for 20 years and, and then you realize you die, they send me to hell. And then you go to hell because, you know, the government wouldn't step in and help a brother out to make <laughs> sure that you got to heaven. And then, of course, like by Please, then it's too late. Like, stop talking. No, I just think Stop that, talking because if this gets heard, government's going to go, you know what? I mean, We're not even thinking about this. This is a much bigger deal than where they're getting their meat from. Yeah, I mean... Stop I, talking. All right, shut up. Shut this thing down. We'll cut it off about five minutes ago was a good ending point. All right? I do not need this idea where government comes and gets a hold of me and says, you know, Tom, DL made a good point. Let's talk about your church for a minute. No, DL never makes a good point about my church. Never makes but, a good point about my church. Could you imagine, though? I, I really the argument's there. Like, Far more important than whether you, you got some bad meat. You know, you... You know, I, I know that as a, a, you're evangelical, right? Yes. So you believe in only the 66 books in the in mm -hmm. in, the, in the canon, in the right? The canon, yep. And then, but the Catholics, they have like a few have, more. Yeah. And so you can imagine if like the government regulated, they could say, well, the 66 books are only the legit ones. So you could like really put a hurting on your on the Catholics. Your Catholics, yeah. And then you could drive more people to your church. So that's what. So the church is now could, full on is. So, Put a hurting on the Catholics and draw them into us. I mean, basically, because the, the if Catholics government would have involved, to adapt, that's turn into. They would have to adapt, uh -huh. and if they refuse to adapt, then they would be able to down. operate, and people would still want to be spiritual, so they would have to go to your church, and so therefore you would raise your church profits, and you could be. Haven't more we wealthy. seen countries where they've tried could, to you could be the control the religion Osteen through government? There's. Why not? Why not even come this week? I saw about not coming next week. Why not come no. this week? You uh, went, no, you went too far. But, but you went too far. But, but I was I was fine with the ha ha ha. You went right. to Joel Osteen but, though. But, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Should I listen Most, to you? Yes. Okay. I made a joke about that, and a lot of Christians would cringe. They would. App, he just cringed. For real. <laughs> That's like, good. Really, a lot uh -huh. of Christians would cringe. Catholics would cringe hearing that. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what, what happens. With business owners go, right? So what? everybody that just sat there and thought, ah, oh, he's just poking fun at him. No, that is exactly mm -hmm. what happens. You know, it just, it gets dressed up in a way to make it seem yep. like it's more valuable. And people are like, oh yeah, it was totally necessary. We needed that. No, that is exactly what happens. And that is why you have fewer choices. Right now you have plenty of choices for any churches. And yeah, some of them are dopey. And, oh yeah, uh -huh. and, and 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 maybe they will lead you astray spiritually, and you got to work that out, and you got to figure out what it is that you believe. But it's not in, for government to come in and say but it's not for government. But for a steakhouse, could, it is. Yeah, for government, it could do a bang up job. And if and if you are a religious person and you believe that um, <clears throat> that uh, government should stay out, uh -huh. they, then you should probably apply that to other other areas. areas. Because uh -huh. the same benefit that you get from being able why to would you not your want church, why don't you choose your restaurant? Yep. Why would I not with these other things? So, so, so let me ask you something because did I did what, I salvage that a little? A little bit, not not right. very. It's still you, Joel Osteen still got said. Can you do me a favor, real quick? Can, it's not getting better. Okay, sorry. Like what? Why do I even? So, we'll pray for you. All right. <laughs> That's we'll we'll just maybe we should shut Did this you down. Just Christian swear at me? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so we'll pray for you. It's not my. Can you do me a favor, real quick? Yeah. Can you bring up? The text from the book. Again. Yes, let's do that. Because here's something. If you notice, there was something very different in here that's different than I think all the weeks that we've covered so far okay. out of the book. Other the than very, the yeah, oh yeah, the very last line. Get rid of most. most. Government. Right. So, okay. So I look at this and I go, wait a minute. So even the libertarians were, were, were or they're like, get rid of all of it. <laughs> right. Even he realized in writing this, most well, he might be an, a minarchist, okay, right? But, the person oh, so, who believes in smaller government, not no government. Okay, so inside of this, if we because we we don't usually separate that other weeks, we don't mm -hmm. put them into a category. So let's look at this, right? And if we're going to go, okay, can libertarians 
believe that maybe some regulation has a purpose. It depends on which one you talk to. Okay. I would say yes. Okay. Now, here's here's the thing that I always add to it. I say that we always must keep in mind that government, if we have one at all, is a necessary evil. And it must be not, you know, we, we don't need to diminish the words. We really need to think of it as this is a necessary evil. And we only need the absolute bare minimum mm -hmm. that's necessary. Because in the moment you let your guard down and thinking that you could have just a little bit more, you're going to get a lot more. Here we are. Right? We're right here, mm -hmm. you know. And so I think we need to constantly be evaluating and be like, do we absolutely have to have that? So we might make an argument and say, okay, well, the meatpacking industry... Exactly. They absolutely had to have that, mm -hmm. whereas the barbers, they don't need that. Okay. But then we could look at it and say, there might be a time when, and, and this never happens, when we look at something and we say, we got to have this. And maybe we do. Okay. okay. Let's, just say, let's say we do. And then 20, 30 years down the line, we look change. at it again and go, and you know go, what? You know what? We've got new organizations that have popped up and they actually could do a better job at keeping the meatpacking industry in line. And do you know one of the biggest problems, one of the biggest complaints about regulations and the people who are involved in it and, and are taking the hit with these things, their biggest complaint is all the existing ones that are already there. Right. That if, okay, if you want to add one, now listen, we can say whatever we want about Donald Trump, but I don't, think, I don't think he ever got it in place, but his plan was for every new regulation got removed too. Right. Okay, I don't think he ever, he said no. it really well. I don't think it ever got implemented. Right. But the premise is a good one. Yeah. That You know what? If you want to, if you want to hinder the people, take mm -hmm. some hindrances right. away. Okay, and I think that the problem is what a lot of upstart companies and stuff are complaining about is that there's so many barriers from the start that we can't get in there. And these are probably things in all reality, they've kind of been fixed. They've been dealt with in other ways. That, right. You know what I'm saying? Self-policing is kind of right. broad. Listen, I'll tell you what right now. For restaurant guidelines, um, they have this pesky thing, what is it, like Yelp and all these other things. Right. They're going to tell you straight out yeah. that you don't need the government to come in. We have, have new somebody mechanisms sit. to, yes, to spread that information. Don't come here, dude. There's yeah. a rat running right across that floor right, right now. Somebody could take a picture of the roach in the restaurant, a selfie, like, here's Here me I am with the roach. He's <laughs> singing. Uh -huh. And here's me in the roach at, you know, such and such. Dude, don't say a name because, you know, you know we're there at goes the sponsors. La Cucaracha Mexican that's restaurant with literally La Cucaracha. If you go to La Cucaracha, I, I think that's, you get I think that's, get at that I think point. that is Spanish for cockroach. So I, think, I think you're correct. Um, so in, but inside this, I think that there are these things. I think that if we said, hey, wait a minute. Let's see if we can look into this. Right. So, you know what's funny is that, okay, so I have what I thought might be three places mm -hmm. that maybe some form of regulation hits. Okay. Okay. Um, one we already covered, meat packaging. Okay. I, I think that's, I, okay, you know what? If there's an issue there and I don't know the process. Right. Somebody who's in meat packing could maybe come and say, hey, no, dude, we, we already covered. I don't know. Right. In my little world, I go, okay, meat packaging. We'll go, we did that one. Restaurants. Because- and here's what I'm getting at. Okay. We, I know we just joked and said this, but there are things that happen on the other side, how they treat the meat, how they, how they trans, that we would never know. Right. That somebody would have to get sick in order for, or a number of people would have to right. get sick for everybody to go, Ooh, that's a bad restaurant. Right. Okay. And, and unfortunately, sometimes with a restaurant, you might not attribute it to that restaurant unless it happens immediately, the food sickness. Right. But food, is, food sickness is crazy <clears> because <throat> sometimes it's 24 hours almost right. before it kicks in. So, And if you've been to more, more than one restaurant. More than one restaurant. Which one was it? What do I do? So I think that maybe sometimes that's why people don't go, stay away from here because they don't know, was it something I ate at the house? You know, I had, I grabbed something out of the refrigerator at work and they can never limit it down or they just go, you know, COVID, I got the right. bid. So I think that maybe there's an area there, yeah. maybe not to a huge extent, okay, that it has to be so involved. That, right. Yeah. You know, so maybe we look at, this is, a, this is an industry that maybe could use some overwatch. We could talk about it. Um, and the last one I had, I guess maybe we explained it out a little bit, construction. Okay. Building construction, stuff along those lines. That you, that you want there to be a certain level of guidelines. Okay. When you start building up and something can come down on top of people, maybe we want some industry standards. Maybe okay. we want some that kind of go, this so, is what we do. Let's, let's stop for a moment. Okay. Because I, I want to point out something that you just said. You said, let's have some industry standards. You can have industry standards mm -hmm. without government. Government. They are not tied together. Okay. And I think that's what people fail to realize is that you can have some industry standards. And um, so I'll give you a really good example. Uh, I formerly was a web developer and I used the Ruby programming language. Okay. okay. 
Now, programming... Is, is this where I keep listening to you and pretend mm -hmm. like I know what you're talking about? Or do I, I'm, I'm, do I just... All right, go I'm, ahead. I'm going to explain it all, okay? Okay, go ahead. So, in there, when you would write code, there were certain standards of how that code would need to be written. Okay. So, if I'm writing a block of code, so think of like a paragraph, mm -hmm. where like a paragraph is all the same, you know, like there's the same concept being talked okay. about in a particular paragraph. I might have what we call a block of code that's doing a particular thing. Okay. So what happens is you do some indentation to help you understand the differences with lines. So you're like, okay, I do a line here. And then when I come down here, this line is still a part of that group. Okay. okay. But it's its own, it's like, it's almost like its own sentence. Okay. Right. So you indent two over. Two yeah, we're together, over. but it's a little bit separate. Right. It's a little different so, thing. So now okay. that I know, and then what I might do is when I come down, um, uh, I, I said that a little bit wrong, but Rubius, don't get mad. But effectively, you have some indentation that you under certain circumstances. Okay. We'll just do it like that. And so um, if you indented three spaces, you would be wrong. Okay. It's two. Okay. Other programming languages are different based on how they're designed, how the computer reads them. Okay. So you might have four spaces or there may be a standard for those working in that language. Right. So you have you have different standards. So almost think of it like this. You write in German. I write in English. Those are our different programming languages. Right. And we might say in English, you have to have two spaces in between each sentence. And you might say, yeah, but in German, we do it only one space in between each sentence. OK, right? that's that's our general standard. And so then if I were to come over and start writing German, I learned it and I write it. But then I'll start applying some of the ways that we do it in English. German writers might say, hey, well, this whoa, whoa. doesn't work. This is not how you okay. write German. Right. right. And and this was a standard and it was considered very poor form and you would get in a lot of trouble. Would it still work? In some cases, yes. And we don't want to get into the two specifics of it. Um, in some cases, it wouldn't because the design of the programming language could not be read if you violated these rules. And I think that this is where and this the, does the not, program would crash. I, I don't think this is where this transfers into building construction. So but what, what because I'm because you're saying there's already a guideline. Right. And it's only gonna work in this guideline if I right. use it like this. We so, don't have that guideline. So right now the walls here, uh, uh -huh. they they generally tend to be you, you have studs every 16 inches. Mm -hmm. All right. So I might decide that I want to do it every 18 inches. Now, currently, the city mm -hmm. will say, nope, you can't do that. When they come in to do an inspection or whatever, and if right. they happen to see it, they're going to be like, hey, this is too far apart. You have to have them every 16 inches, right? You could have that as an industry standard so that everybody understands it. Right. And so then your business and my business, if I come over to your business and, you know, if I've been working at this, you know, this guy's business over here, and then I come to work for you and I start doing it every 18, you can go, whoa, whoa, what the heck are you doing? No, we do it is 16, buddy. That's not how we do this. Right. You know, and we do this because of this other reason, right? Some other reason or there might be some over, and it could be that there's a third party that's coming in. Or, okay. Or what have you. Now, t take your example there of 16 to 18. You go to 18, you use less lumber, production becomes cheaper. Right. Okay. So what happens when the company who did 16, and you got a company who does 18, and the guy left the 18, goes to the 16 and goes, hey, you know, over here, we start doing 18. You get Nothing. a bad reputation. But what happens when that be, when the 16 goes, you know what? That's a good point. You guys were doing it. We'll do it too. Right. That's now the standard. And, and it so can the be. Standard, so that's what I'm saying. Is it can be. If, we, if we're not cautious and nobody's watching that, does 18 become 20? Does 20 become it, 24? It, it, it might. And and I and I think that's actually a benefit, not a drawback necessarily, right? Because one, if you look at it like there's this standard that everybody follows, be, mm -hmm. and, and they have some rationale behind it, right? In the computer science example, there is a particular rationale behind it. One, it's either readability or the computer program will fail depending on the programming language. Some programming languages require certain levels of spacing. Okay. Like you, you can't do it. It, you want it to. won't work. Exactly. It just simply won't work. Yep. And you could have it and say like, look, the building materials won't work for whatever reason. Maybe they make drywall sheets that are, you know, of a certain length so that you can only install them at 16 inch intervals, whatever. I don't know. I, and and I'm, I'm kind of making stuff up at the moment. Right. But my, my point, my overall point is when the government does it, it's fixed. Right. And you can't, it's hard to change. Right. Especially when the federal government does it. Uh -huh. So if that happens to not be a need, 16 inches, maybe it turns out 14 inches is better. Right. 
Maybe 18 inches is better, whatever the case may be. When the industry has more flexibility, one, they can impose that internally by saying like, this is, this is not how we do business. This is not how we do it. We do it like this way for a reason. And, but then if we find out later that things have changed, then there's that flexibility for the industry to adapt. Okay, and, right? and, and I get this. So the, the reason 50 the, years ago for 16 inches may no longer exist now. Okay, but here, here's what happens is that with that, you can have the industry says this. My problem is that there's nothing to say this is how we do it. Right. Everybody can start doing 24. Right, right. and that's where his, his comment about associations and third parties comes into play. So... I mean, effectively, so, government, but, but, but government is a third party. That's all they are. Yeah, but but here's what I'm saying. If you say, okay, listen, yes, there's going to be this third party mm -hmm. who goes around and checks new construction homes or buildings, whatever it is. Right. Okay. Now, once again, what if that person says, yeah, we don't really care what the standard is. If you guys want to do 14 and 14, we don't care. I mean, you, could have, you could have that from government. Huh? Exactly. So what I'm getting at you is- You have a lazy bum that comes in and like, yeah, whatever. I whatever, dude. Like, I'm out. just- most of them are 16, but you got a couple 14s. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, we're good. And, and, but the thing is, in all reality, I don't think it's, it's, right, it's going to sound horrible, I think. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. If somebody was building something that came to you and they didn't measure it out the greatest, and instead of having all 16, right. one was 15 or one was 17 or right. 18, okay, the bill's probably not going to fall down because of that. Right. And I think that we do run the risk if we have government regulation. I think we run the risk of no. I'm walking in here, right. and then what happens is there could be the jerk who lets none of that pass. Right. It's going to, he's out there every stud right. doing this, yep. okay? And that becomes, which slows down production, which then says people go, right. I'm not going to build a house. I'm not building houses anymore because right. it's just not worth it. Right. So I, I think that we have to be cautious that if it can be over-regulated, it can be too much right. of, do it like this, but right. then they could become very lax and go the other way, that right. now all of a sudden, um, you have somebody's only putting up studs wide enough to hang sheetrock right there's no other support inside of there now here's the thing we've said that people will get a reputation that builder you know that builder they don't do them so well right okay but that's great but what happens if all the builders go yeah but they're doing it we're doing it that we're forget it well all what are you gonna do right all of us have a bad reputation you gotta buy it from somebody you know what i'm saying that, that so well so i think that's where the market shines right because the market says some people want somebody with a good reputation who's going to do it right, mm -hmm. you know? And so you get organizations like Consumer Reports. And yes. I think Consumer Reports is an amazing, you know, their their reputation, the only reason that people go to them is to get the lowdown on products. Right. And we're looking and seeing. Because they're not selling anything. What did you test? Mm -hmm. How did you test it? And how do people rate? And, and how, how are these things rated? And, 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 you know, you can have another company that could come and say, you know, we're going to be, uh, I don't know, people's reports, I don't know what I'm called. You know, people's reports that we're going to be their competitor now and mm -hmm. we're going to do a better job because we, they do, you know, on washing machines or uh, they do five point checks, but we do six, you know, and then I can decide whether or not I want a six point check or a five point check. So, right? but is and that, and then the market is, can really decide here, here's the what, problem. what is benefit. What you're talking about is, is simpler in the sense of I can go to one factory where they're producing washing machines right. and I walk, stand here and go, all right, got it, right. got it, got it, got it. Okay. As opposed to a house. Right. Houses are all over the place. They're at different, sta they're right. at different stages of building and stuff like that. Right. It becomes far more difficult to rely maybe on that because is that third party company going to hire somebody to go to all of these houses I mean, every we time? do that now with government. Somebody comes out and- After. Yes. A lot of times it's, uh, right. we, we've had to do some of this inside right. of our church. But, but government already does that, right? They, you have an inspector that comes out and inspects the work at right. a certain point, right? And To keep so, us to a standard. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, and so, so you could really just shift that to a third party. You already, it's really shifting from one third party to another. So we need to start looking at government as a third party. They are literally a third party because they're not involved in the transaction no, other than well, except saying, the money off the we, sale. Right. But mm -hmm. they're not involved in the transaction other than to say, we are the governing body. We demand that you do it this particular way. So let me ask you a question. So let's say you have a third party. They do these inspections. They do this. So the regulations is no longer from the government, but it's from this third party. Right. What's the difference? Well, the difference is they have more of an incentive to... Um, to what? To... To get it right. Enforce it or look to get the other right. way. Because if you're running consumer reports and then I buy you know I, I buy a washing machine or if i buy a house right and you say hey yeah hold on do me a favor stick with my house building example okay, house that's building. my specific example okay. so of so so you're with um yeah i'm trying to think of it if, a, you a consumer reports i don't care i don't care the company that we use but house stick reports. with the house building. so we got house reports you're a okay. third party company and 
uh, when when somebody when a builder is done, they contact you, and then they tell me. They say we are house report certified. Okay. So now I know I can go and look at what you do, mm-hmm. what you what you uh, worked out, and I can say, all right, they did all these checks. They've checked to make sure that the studs are sixteen inches apart. Right. They've checked to make sure that there are outlets every so you know every so far apart. So they've checked to make sure that they're GFI. They've made sure that they're all of these things, right? But how they've is that made sure that there's not aluminum wiring in the house? You know, how is that different than the government doing it though? The, the difference is that if there's an if there's a change, mm-hmm. I tend to believe that it can happen more quickly. Oh, in the private in the private like sector okay. than the government. Okay, and. Because the government, the way the, the government just doesn't do anything cheap, they're, or well, all, most of the time, they're, but they're, uh-huh. they're all they always drive up the cost. Yep, and the, it's questionable about whether every regulation is absolutely necessary. So once right. again, but I think we fall back into even if we're talking about the, the housing market, for example, house so building, in, house construction, in, we can so, go to them and start saying, "Hey, it's time to remove these standards. These standards don't really apply right. anymore." Right. And, okay. And I think that there's a flexibility in doing that. Okay. And. If the standard, if there's an area where the standards can be flexible, mm-hmm. then you could have uh, you could have ratings and say these houses fall under the gold standard, these ones under the silver standard, okay. these ones are under the bronze standard. The bronze standard means it's not going to fall, it's not gonna fall down on you. on you. It's not going to burn down on right. you. It's not going to do these things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's a little added security, a little added safety for the silver standard. You're going to get a little bit better package. Like maybe instead of every 16 inches. Um, uh, it's going to be every but that 10 could be, inches. That could be the placement of right. outlets and stuff and, along those lines. And, and, and here, I'll make up a total example. They could say, we're putting more wood in the house, mm-hmm. more in the frame. Yep. So if a tree falls on it, you'll have less damage. Right? But, that, but, but hold on, hold on. That could not be the third-party inspector. That could be the builder right. makes that determination. Right. The builder can make that determination. And then the third-party inspector could verify it and say, it's yep, verified we, ver- that it's we, we done. have verified it. That's all government does. All mm-hmm. government is doing is verifying. And then you pay a you know, stipend to the... Uh, because you do the same thing with the church, government. Yeah, we've, been, uh-huh, we've been through it with the yeah. church. So, yep. so everything that we do... So I think what's key out of this... Is he says regulatory functions should be reprivatized to promote innovation, reduce costs, and allow individuals to choose not to follow regulations they deem harmful to themselves. So, what we what the, the 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 challenge I think that libertarians have mm-hmm. is that I think we pre- we get pre- we allow it to be presented, and we sometimes present it ourselves as we're going to get rid of regulations, gone bye bye, not to be here anymore. Yeah, there's no standard anymore. That's not what we're saying. And, and, and what we're really saying is the government actually doesn't do a great. They don't do a great job of enforcing these, and they can be a bit slow in in changing these standards. And some of these standards, it's questionable whether they really need to be fixed into law as a regulation. Right. And that, and that because you have these other people who have nothing to do right. with the house building. Right. Uh, they're the ones determining. Oh, we're going to do this from now on. Right. That and that's exactly what they were talking about. They passed right. these laws. Oh, we're going to do this from now on. Okay. Right. Now we need somebody to go enforce it. Right. So now if we could get the people who are involved in the process right. to go. This is really what we have to have right. in all reality. Right. I'm more apt to believe the home builder, right. the guy out there who's out there nailing stuff, and making things happen, he's building out the framework and stuff like that. Right. I'm more apt to believe that guy than the guy coming from the state or right. the federal government. And, however, and what's not what's not listed here is that um, we tend to believe that there would be increased liability when you rem- when you move these things these these functions to the private market that there's more liability hey i came to you uh, i bought this product that has your label on it that said it's kosher and project veritas mm-hmm. showed me that it wasn't that you are not doing a good job so now i've been eating food that's not actually kosher right because this is what I was talking about earlier when I said we have new things that have arisen and that have risen up since, you know, long time ago that mm-hmm. didn't exist. We have cell phones now that we can take pictures of cockroaches yeah, that's what I'm saying. ourselves. Yep. We don't necessarily have to wait on, uh, on for government to come in and take a look. Come and find mm-hmm. We can take pictures. Employees can take a picture and be like, look at this rat hole that I work in. Yep. Right? Uh, you have people like, you have organizations like Project Veritas. Project Veritas tends to go after government people. Yes. So imagine if we had a lot fewer government. You could have Project Veritas types now going and saying, well, let's double check and see if these standards are actually holding up. And they send somebody to work on a crew and then take pictures and say, you know, home this, builder, this builder ABC not. is not doing it to, to spec and 
Home Builders of America. I don't know. Hopefully, it's not a real name. But find out. But you Thanks know, Home, plug, Builders, dude. Of, Home uh-huh. Builders of America, who who verifies that ABC Home Builders is doing their job, isn't really verifying By it. By either. And so we now, busted the story. Uh huh. Right. So, you know, we've got citizen journalists that are going in here into these industries to find out what's going on. Like all of this that is happening now could actually happen. And I believe that when you have a more free market, when you put everything right. back onto the uh, the privatization, like we said earlier in earlier episodes, you have you increase the liability cost to because like, hey, uh, I'm a dedicated Jewish person. I only eat kosher. Mm-hmm. And you failed me, even though I was trusting you. I now have, um, uh, I have a claim against you. I bought this home with the expectation that you were putting, uh, you, you know, uh, beams and, every sixteen inches, and because you put them every twenty four inches, this is what happened. Because, because who's suing the government when the government right. doesn't do an inspection the right way? Nobody. Right. right. You know, you know what I'm saying, right? So I, I see what you're saying is that there's a higher level of accountability. Yes. When it's straight on, we're dealing on this level instead right. of this, you know, right. distant government guy who's involved in right. here somewhere. And, and so, what role could the government play if there was a government? The government could play a role and say, "Hey, look, we are fraud watchers. Fraud meaning if you tell somebody something, you have to deliver on what you said, what mm-hmm. they agreed to you. So if I agree to buy a home from you, and you show me a checklist." Uh, or you show uh, here's me a certification, what we did. Uh-huh. and then I go find that certification, and I say, here are all the things that, that got you that certification. So now I can say, and, and if I find out that you didn't, if you put aluminum wiring instead of copper wiring, right, and, and you lied to me because maybe it was cheaper or whatever, right. I don't know. And um, so then I would have a claim because you fraudulently, because you didn't accidentally put- No, you knew you were doing right? it wrong. Like uh-huh. you didn't accidentally do that. So then I could say, you- didn't deliver the house that you said you did, and you, Mister Label, that you know, uh, you didn't inspect it properly to verify that. They, so now I have a claim against both of you because now I've got a house that isn't what I what I uh, paid for. And so then it just becomes an attorney. Yeah, basically. Okay. And so then the government just basically protects people from fraud. Okay. Which you know what. Since the government's not doing good at doing things, maybe they need to do fewer things. So maybe, maybe hopefully, maybe this can be something they get, get right. Uh huh. Like, hey, you don't have that much to do. All you got yeah, to- you don't have to worry about that anymore. Let's just do this. It's and not, maybe you, you can crush it, this. It literally becomes you have one job. Now they have like nine hundred jobs. Right, and they don't do well. No. Okay, I'm good, dude. All right, he's good. I'm good. Are you good? Okay. They, 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 the people there's no spoken. there's no negative they feedback they, on that. Let's, let's get this back on full here, so we can wrap this up. So at the end of the day, regulation, let's, we're not trying to get rid of it and just totally leave it gone to the wind. We're literally trying to say, let's move it to a, an area where we think it would be, uh, where it would, it would be more beneficial to the actual mm-hmm. end user and beneficial meaning, um, maybe there'd be some liability if something happened or Hey, maybe things have changed. There's, there's reason to no longer do it the way that we're doing it, whether it's, uh, making it more rigorous or less rigorous. Right. Right. It could be the case. So that's what we mean when we want to deregulate. We want to generally move it to the private sector, not just necessarily let it go. And, and just like, yeah, swoops. right. Like that's not uh-huh. what we're looking for. So hopefully you got something out of that. And today we're not going to do, uh, we're not having a bill review. We're not having a social topic. We're just kind of, you know, taking a little bit easy today, uh, especially since I gave him a big hard time. You know, I'm always giving him a hard Don't time. Don't mention it again. And whenever you meet him, whenever you meet this man, you shake this man's hand. Because this man puts up a lot. That's real life. Coming over. He really That's does. real life, yeah. He, come, he comes over and he puts up a lot because I am difficult. You can ask him. You can ask my wife. You can ask my ex Ask my ex-wife. I think, my in all honesty, here, I think her. anybody who just knows you, period. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, hold on. I don't think they have to be real close to you right, to understand right. you. I, they, get oh, you they're going to know the most, though. Get you on, oh, yeah. But get you on Facebook and Twitter, they'll be like, there he is. They're going to be like, wow, this guy, he's the guy that talks about communication and you know being a positive influence. And then he's so difficult. And they hear yeah, this. That is how it works, mm-hmm. people. That's why we need more regulation on you. <laughs> we do. We need we need podcast regulation. Regulation. <laughs> so, all right. With that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to close out. So hope you enjoyed it. Have fun. See you the next episode. That's all for this episode. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit that subscribe button and connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod on Twitter, or send me an email to LibertyDadPodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. To catch Liberty Dad episodes when they air, head over to facebook.com forward slash free speech media, where the weekly episode airs Monday night at 8 p.m. And while you're there, be sure to check out the other free speech media shows. Prefer an audio format? Then head on over to libertydad.com 
or just search for Liberty Dad, all one word, on your favorite podcast app. Remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time, and I'm out.